Hello and welcome to Zog Science. Uh, we're, today we're going to be talking about dihybrid crosses. Um, with that, we're going to be looking at the laws of independent assortment and segregation as uh, Mendel uh, laid them out back in the early 1800s. So, um, what we're looking at here is we're going to be looking at the cross between two individuals who are heterozygous for two different traits. Uh, we're just going to call them A and B for this sake, but they can be just about anything. Um, and so the first thing we need to do is we need to figure out how we're going to set up our Punnett square. Now, because we're looking at two traits, we have to double our Punnett square, and so we're going to make it be a 16 by 16 Punnett square. Um, the next thing we need to do is we need to figure out exactly what alleles are going to be inherited by each of the gametes that are going to be put up here. Now, remember the segregation of alleles says that every uh, gene or trait has an equal chance of being inherited versus another. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to need to come up with each of the different possibilities um, for these traits. So the first possibility we can have is we can have big A, big B. Uh, we can also have big A, little b. We can do little a, big b. Or we can also do little a, little b. And it's going to be the exact same thing for the other individual. So we've got our alleles uh, segregated out. Okay, each of these again represents a gamete. Uh, and now we just need to figure out how uh, what what types of offspring we can have. And that's going to be the exact same as any of your normal uh, Punnett squares. You're just going to bring your alleles down and find out what kind of offspring we can produce. All right, so what you can see is that we have a large variety of different offspring that we can get. Um, just like in your single monohybrid crosses where you are crossing two um, heterozygous individuals for one trait, um, you see all the different genotypes that you can get. We have uh, just about every single combination of genotypes um, that we can get. Now, if we count these up, let's just count up the ones that are going to show us our dominant traits, um, which ones are going to be sort of both, and then which one is just going to be um, our uh, recessive traits. So we've got dominant here, dominant here, dominant here, dominant here. Both of them are dominant there. Only one is dominant here. Both dominant, 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 dominant. And I believe that that's all the ones that are dominant. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we've got nine. They're all dominant, okay? Now let's count up how many A's we have that are dominant. So that's one, two, three. So we've got three, where just our A's are dominant. And then we've got also three, where the B's are dominant. And then we've got one, where we are recessive. So that's going to give us our typical 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio of our different phenotypes. Right? And those are just the ratios for the phenotypes. The genotypes is a lot more complex, um, but that's just going to be your, your normal 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 for a dihybrid cross. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.